Welcome back to the Richard and Judy Book Club, uh, exclusively with W.H. Smith. Uh, this is a wonderful book. Now, I know we keep saying that uh, in these, in these uh, broadcasts, but th this is a book of huge charm. Even the title's charming, Waiting for Columbus, Waiting for Columbus by Thomas Trofimuk. Um, it's a story about a, a youngish man who basically appears out of nowhere um, in modern-day Spain. Actually, he's found in the sea. And he completely believes that he's Christopher Columbus, the great explorer who died, of course, 500 years ago. So, not illogically, he's committed to an asylum, uh, where he falls under the care of a beautiful young nurse called Consuela, um, who has to listen to his stories. I say has to, his stories, as repeated in the book, are elegant and utterly believable. And as the days and weeks and months pass, we, the reader, and Consuela, his nurse, begin to wonder if actually this young man is somehow the reincarnation of Columbus because the detail and the grasp of Columbus's actual day-to-day -day life is complete. Of course he's not, and there's another reason for it all. But Thomas, I congratulate you on allowing us to suspend our disbelief so thoroughly, or well, certainly for me, that by about chapter five, I was, I was saying to Judy, it's Columbus. <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, well, he's going to have to find a way of bringing him back, but he's definitely there. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a charming, as I say, an, an intriguing story. Um, I've never read anything quite like it, actually. What, 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 how did it create itself in your, in your mind? Uh, you know, it, it, uh, it popped up about 15 years prior to uh, the completion of the book. I, I um, uh, was looking for a way to, to, to um, explore the idea of obsession. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I looked around and, and uh, Columbus showed up at my door one night <laughs> and knocked and he was quite drunk. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and I, but I let him in anyway. He asked the way. I, I, yeah, I, I, let him, I let him in <laughs> yeah. and uh, I started to write about him and I started to read like voraciously uh, history books on Columbus. And the more I read, the more I realized that none of the books agreed. Mm. They, and so I thought, well, this is this is uh, this good. would be good for good. a fiction writer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so in I went, and I hit about thirty thousand words, and and then I just kind of stood up and said, well, I don't really know what this story is. Mm. Mm. And so I did what good writers do and put it in a, a drawer, and uh, yeah. it was fifteen years later. And you, uh, when and you the, when you had an, a, a way of treating it and, and developing yeah, it, yeah, I, I think yeah. it was having a daughter. Okay. And um, and 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 the story just, uh, you know, it, it it wasn't that I woke up. Uh, but it, but it just sort of well, appeared. Well, having having a daughter, not not to give anything away, because yeah. of, but 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 that is because of the connection, which becomes clear towards the end of the yeah. book. Yeah, part of the book is is dealing with my own fear uh, mm -hmm. as a father. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, and so and that so that was that was also that was a starting uh, point. Exactly. Fifteen years later, is I'm that glad you okay. said that. That, yeah. that explains a lot about it. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, What's, what's great is you start to, to, to weave in um, complementary strands in these stories, and they all meet, they all come together at the end perfectly. Um, as we listen to these conversations between uh, Columbus and, 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 the, and the nurse, that's Consuela, um, and see them slowly falling in love, certainly her falling in no, love with she him. She falls in love. She falls in love mm -hmm. with him, yeah. but it's not unmutual. Um, <laughs> Um, and, and at the same time, we have we, we cut away completely from this asylum. It's in Seville, isn't it? Yes. That's right. Yeah. Uh, we cut away from there, uh, and we, we find a young Interpol detective who's on the trail of a man who went missing after a heinous crime, a mm -hmm. terrible, tragic crime, which we, we won't say any more about mm -hmm. here, has been committed. And a man, that's all we'll say, has vanished. Mm -hmm. And he's on his track, on his own. He's, he's, he, he drives himself across France, where he starts, and he drives into Spain, and he picks up the trail, and we realise very quickly that he's on the trail of Columbus, he's mm -hmm. on the trail of this man. We don't know why, uh, and we don't know qu quite what's driving him, but, it, but we know that it's, it's, this isn't a simple manhunt, there, there's, there's more to it. And I, what I loved about that was, it, it allowed you to begin to realise that Columbus isn't at all, and, and you do this very cleverly. There's a piece, I think it's either in the chapter four or chapter five, and it's something, forgive me if I'm, if I'm mm -hmm. summarising this a bit roughly, but um, he's talking to Consella about a conversation he had with Queen Isabella of Spain mm -hmm. about kitting him out with the ships that were going to prove <laughs> that the world was round. And he's having this long conversation, she's asking him questions and he's trying to answer her. And then he says, and you know what, she hung up on me. <laughs> and you, or maybe there's a scene with a television or something. Suddenly, in the, in, back 500 years ago, and you think, ah, his, his, his memory is beginning to mm -hmm. emerge from the past. It's mm -hmm. starting to merge with the present. Yeah. Very nice device. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yeah. really, really good. Yeah. And, and, and the more of the 21st century artifacts that kind of sneak into his stories, you realize, I think as a reader anyway, yeah. that you realize that he's starting to make those connections. He's yeah. surfacing. Yeah. 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 I love his character, actually. He's. Uh, He's immensely likable, um, even despite the fact that he parades around naked. <laughs> <without> yeah, <laughs> I thought you liked that. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> parades around naked at the uh, the, the sanitarium, and uh, and he is immensely likable. And at the heart of heart of the book is, as becomes increasingly clear, deep love. 
deep mm. love which which kind of manifests itself in it appears many different women i mean columbus columbus you know, is women in the past columbus yeah. is mm. women um not knowing very much at all about the real columbus did he have a lot of women uh, I, I know that uh, the history books say that he had a wife, mm. uh, and sh at some point she disappeared, and then he had a mistress mm. whom he never married. And uh, I'm about half the books that I read on him said that on his deathbed, his, his, his something along his last words were, uh, "Tell Beatrice I'm sorry." Mm. Mm. Wow. Uh, and, and, and no one is quite sure what that's about, but he did not marry her, and so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, maybe that was it, but, I, I, you know, they don't know. You write um, very tenderly, but very graphically, um, sex scenes in, in the mm -hmm. book. Um, Columbus has a, a hunger and an appreciation, and almost an Epicurean appreciation mm -hmm. of women, doesn't he? Women's oh, yeah. bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Has your wife read this? <laughs> yeah. She's, she's actually my first reader, so I, I think, if I can get a past her, I'm good. Was she cool? <laughs> it's, it's very erotic. Was she cool with that? Was she, was, she was fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did yeah. you find writing those scenes? Because uh, sex scenes are notoriously difficult to, to navigate, if I can use that word. And, yeah, and you, again, but, you do so beautifully. I mean, but restraint. I, I wrote them first and then pulled back uh -huh. as, as much as I could. Okay. Yeah. So, God, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to see the originals. We could make so, a packet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's really lovely. Uh, just reading a little bit about you, aren't, aren't you in, back in Canada, aren't you in some mad poet society? I am. I'm in a group called the Raving Poets and I, I, um, uh, I play the keyboards quite badly uh, in a little five-piece band and we back up poets. So a poet will come up to the microphone and, and they'll turn around to the band and, and we'll say, what's your poem about? And sometimes they don't know, but I mean, often they will. They'll, they'll say, "Well, it's the color gray, on, you know, or, or it's the color of the ocean on, in a particular place." And, and the band, you we've been doing this for ten years, so we we improvise on whatever they tell us, and it, it works beautifully. Actually, it's really it's really fun for me. Yeah. Okay, well, just just to finish with yeah. uh, with where we started, which is the book. Yeah. Ob obviously, he's in the asylum, and it's not giving anything away to say that clearly he's in deep denial about something. Mm -hmm. Something absolutely appalling has happened to him, uh, and this is his escape. Um, uh, and the way you describe in the end, in the final chapter, um, what that was, what he was running from, um, and why the policeman is looking for him, it all ties together, uh, made me cry. Mm. Uh, I'm a bit of a blubber, I must admit, but um, it really did, I, you know, I couldn't read the page because uh, my eyes were full of tears. You are the most gentle writer, you have an, an extraordinary tender touch, you really do. Thank you. I think you're wonderful. Yeah, it's a lovely book. Thank you very much for uh, coming all that way well, to talk to us. And thanks for having uh, me over. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's oh, a pleasure. Pleasure. <laughs> Enjoy London. Um, yeah. And uh, this is where we say, as always, um, we'd love to hear your comments. This is all very interactive. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think about Waiting for Columbus. You, you can be your own critic, you can become a literary critic yourself <laughs> on our website, and you can also vote for your favourite book uh, in all our reading lists. Um, there's eight at the moment, and they're all crackers. Um, and you go to do that to www. I haven't learned this yet, you know. <laughs> www.whsmith.co.uk forward slash Richard and Judy. And uh, thank you for being here and thank, thank you. you for watching. Thank you.